Good morning. I'm Christine Sao. Welcome to this news briefing from the 250th National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in Boston. We're joined today by Dr. Charles Cantrell, who's with the USDA ARS Natural Product Center at Thad Cochran Research Center. He will be talking to us about the mosquito-repelling chemistry of sweetgrass. Dr. Cantrell. Hi. Hi. Th thanks so much for having me. And uh, I'll just start with a brief uh, summary of the the findings or the project. Um, essentially, we were approached by a collaborator of ours at the University of Guelph in Ontario, um, and they had an idea to use or investigate this plant called sweetgrass uh, for its mosquito repelling properties. Uh, the plant is actually used by natives in Montana, uh, the Flathead Indians in Montana. Uh, as well as uh, the uh, Blackfeet Indians in, uh, in Alberta. Um, traditionally, what they do is, is there's a lot of different ways in which the Indians can use the plant. Um, uh, we, you probably have heard of sweetgrass being used for basket weaving and other things like this. It's very common for that type of a use. Uh, it's used in ceremonies, uh, ritual ceremonies. Uh, so it's used in a lot of arts and crafts. Uh, it's used really to, as just a flavor, or, or not a flavor, but a, um, uh, to add a good scent and aroma to the homes. Uh, but these particular tribes of Indians actually uh, would take the sweet grass and uh, they would place really a braid of some sort underneath uh, clothing uh, because it gives off a sweet aroma that, that obviously contains constituents that we were interested in, in, in determining what they were. Uh, another another uh, approach they would also use is they would take the sweet grass and braid it, and then once it's dried, it ca you can burn it as if it's incense, um, and so it'll it'll burn very slowly, and uh, it'll also give off a sweet aroma, and they would use this this smoke and aroma to repel the insects, the biting insects, ideally. Uh, they would they could also take it and put it in a satchel that they would wear around their neck or hang in their home. And uh, the aroma would just uh, 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 keep the bugs away or the biting insects away. And that's really the traditional usage. And then I don't know how much detail you want me to go into, but we, we uh, did a full chemical investigation of the plant and, um, uh, and were able to determine the constituents that were responsible for the activity of the, uh, of the, of the uh, sweet grass. And more importantly, we really were able to show that there is some uh, validity in the, uh, the folk remedy. In other words, there's some effectiveness. Uh, the chem chemicals we were able to isolate were as effective as uh, the commercial uh, insect repellent DEET in the bioassays that we used. Uh, uh, and the two compounds that we're, we're talking about are compounds called Phytol and Coumarin. Uh, and and it was it was just great to be able to uh, validate the remedy and show the, show its effectiveness. This is the fourth um, plant we've investigated in this manner, and uh, it's been about a ten year ten years that we've done this. But this particular one was uh, uh, a little bit different than some of the others because uh, uh, because the constituents. Uh, were much more difficult to obtain and isolate because of the low quantities in the plant itself. So. Great, thank you. Do we have any questions? And please state your name and affiliation. Kiki Sanford, This Week in Science podcast. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, you found the coumarin and the phytol, um, and they're in low concentrations in the plant. Is there any idea as to uh, whether or not they work well as a repellent because they're in combination within the plant and what levels of combina uh, what concentrations of each may or may not make it more or less repellent right it's uh, you know sometimes we do look for this synergism or this combination effect of some of the repellents um, but for the most part uh, in this case as well, the individuals work just as are just as effective as combinations. So we actually tried to recombine. I say there was two active compounds, phytol and coumarin. There, there are probably 30 or 40 minor constituents in the oils and the and the the uh, that are given off uh, from this plant. 
so combining all of those in the exact combination is not very easy to do, but we could combine the major constituents, the phytol and coumarin, uh, in certain ways and retest those, and we did that, and we didn't seem to notice any synergistic effect or combination effect. Really, the individual constituents are, are just as effective as the mixture. Do we have any other questions? Is there any commercial potential for this, or is there any um, knowledge that can be gained from this that could be used to sort of improve current formulations? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good question. And uh, some of the folk remedies we've done in the past have resulted in new compounds that have never been seen before. And that's ideally what we're looking for, is new chemical constituents. Um, we did an investigation of Beautyberry about eight years ago, and it, it produced a compound called calicarpinal, which we tried to develop uh, into a mosquito repellent, commercial mosquito repellent with commercial partners. Um, this particular plant, um, the compounds phytol and coumarin, which are responsible for the activity in the, in the leaves, uh, phytol is very well known in the literature to have insect repelling properties as a as a constituent, a common constituent of essential oils from plants. So it's not an unusual compound or a unique compound. Uh, coumarin is probably less common, um, but coumarin, there's an interesting story behind coumarin. Um, if many of you may remember back in the 90s, um, Avon Skinsosoft had a product that people the discovered actually worked well as an insect repellent. It was not marketed as an insect repellent, um, but the effectiveness was well known among consumers that you could use this as an insect repellent. Um, what's interesting is that one of the constituents, scientists did an investigation on this, one of the constituents in Avon Skinsosoft was the compound coumarin, which we have isolated from sweetgrass. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a great story how we came around with that. Since that time, Avon has actually launched a product line of, I think it's Bug Guard. And uh, Bug Guard, they have an entire product line uh, uh, of insect repellents. Uh, I believe they're picaridin based, another insect repellent, non deep based repellent. They're not coumarin based. Coumarin is not currently registered with the EPA. Uh, as a as an insecticide, to my knowledge, so no one is using coumarin as a commercial insect repellent at the at the present time. Although it's known by Avon, obviously, and others that it does have mosquito repelling properties. There may be some reason why they never marketed it that way, or uh, maybe they didn't want to register it with the EPA uh, uh, or, or or market it as an insect repellent coumarin products. So. Kiki Sanford, This Week in Science again. Um, is, is it known, uh, the health effects of coumarin or phytol on humans? Because we do know that DEET is not good for you. Right. Um, yeah, DEET has, there's been some, some issues recently with DEET, uh, but we have to remember that DEET's been uh, used for 50 years or so with uh, uh, not a lot of uh, obvious harmful effects. Um, and uh, uh, as far as phytol and coumarin, phytol, to my knowledge, is very non-toxic and very safe. There's nothing in the literature that would say that phytol would be unsafe. Uh, and of course, I mean, you can think of coumarin being used topically in Avon Skinsosoft for years already. So it's there's even evidence to show that it's safe. Uh, it's used as in, in topical products. Uh, there may be even be pharmaceutical formulations that contain it that I don't I don't know about, but I know it's relatively safe. It's very common plant compound, uh, like phytol. So, do we have any other questions? Yes. Katie Cottingham, ACS News Service. Um, I'm wondering, what are you going to do next with this? Are you going to investigate the minor compounds, or are you going to look at other folk remedies? Yeah, we will certainly try to proceed with additional folk remedies. As I mentioned, this is the fourth one we've done. Um, we've had great success working with folk remedies. Uh, so a lot, we're, we're part of a research unit, a natural products utilization research unit, which is a division of USDA ARS, 
but one of our tasks as, as federal workers is to find new bioinsecticides or biorepellents, so natural product-based repellents. So we typically try to find leads or ideas to lead us in the right direction, and folk remedies have been shown to give us great leads and that have a chemicals that are uh, uh, very interesting, and, and, and we, we have a lot of luck investigating these folk remedies. Uh, the beautyberry was a good case. We've done two others that were actually burned, breadfruit and jatropha oil, uh, that resulted in some interesting compounds. Uh, um, but, but this one is, is, is uh, I think the, 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 the neat thing about this one is that it, it produced a compound that was coumarin that is, has a great flavor and was, was known in Avon Skin So Soft to, uh, uh, to have some repelling properties. Uh, and it's very safe. So. So I don't know that we will pursue, pursue commercialization of any sort with this, and we're not pursuing any um, uh, patent protection or anything like that on anything we found. So We have an online question. Yeah, so Sophia Kai from ACS News Service asks, do these compounds repel other insects, and is it possible to use this type of insecticide, insect repellent, to replace methods that insects have built resistance against? Yeah, uh, uh, the, the last question regarding uh, insect resistance, uh, until we know the mode of action, which is, we really don't know a lot of mode of action information for insect repellents as they are. Uh, insecticides, we know a lot about mode of action, but insect repellents, even things like DEET, it's very questionable, it's still a lot of, um, questions in the literature about that. But until we really know a mode of action, we wouldn't be able to really say if it's going to provide better effectiveness than, than other insect, uh, uh, insect repellents on the market. Uh, we don't see a lot of resistance with insect repellents as it is, uh, because the nature of it is you're not really killing the insect, you're just getting it to go away when you look at a repellent. Uh, insecticides, you think of resistance development because they have to overcome the toxic, hate, toxic environment, and so they genetically select for that, uh, overcoming that problem. Uh, All right, I think we've got time for one more question over here. In the yeah, just, just to go back to, does it repel other insects besides mosquitoes? Yeah, we, we don't know that yet. Uh, this is actually in the early stages, this particular project. Um, so we really don't know. The next steps would be other insects that are important to uh, ARS, USDA ARS. Uh, we'll do some work with ticks. Uh, we've done that with all the projects we've done thus far. So we start with mosquitoes because we have an in-house bioassay for that. Uh, we started with Aedes aegypti, which is what the, the current um, study was, the, the mosquito that it targeted. Uh, but we'll move to Anopheles um, mosquitoes. Uh, we'll move to two different species of ticks. Uh, we'll go to fire ants with scientists in Stoneville, Mississippi. Um, and it, depending on the results we see from that, we may go uh, to other ways as well. So we, will, we do plan to do that. Uh, Hi, Jonathan Webb from the BBC. Um, you mentioned you have the kind of active ingredients you found are, are about as good as DEET. Mm -hmm. uh, how does that compare to the other four uh, folk remedies? You've looked at the things you isolated there. Were any of them even better, or is this a particularly good result? Uh, the, yeah, so the, so the other, we isolated four compounds primarily, and phytal and coumarin are the major two. And first of all, they compare to DEET in this particular bioassay, which is a three-minute bioassay. So we're testing repellency. We're, look, we're actually looking at biting deterrency. So we're measuring the number of bites uh, in a, an in vitro type system, but that's designed to mimic really the skin environment. Um, so what we can say in a bioassay like this is that constituents are either more or less effective or as effective as something like DEET. Are they more effective or less effective than nothing at all? Okay, so in this particular case, we were actually able to show that phytol and coumarin statistically are as active as DEET. Uh, there was a, a, a vinyl phenol constituent, another constituent that was actually not as effective as DEET, but more effective than just a blank ethanol control. 
So uh, the others were borderline effectiveness, but the significant ones were the phytol and the coumarin. I hope that answers your question. Well, thanks for asking about the previous remedies. Previous remedies. Uh, the, as far as um, phytol and coumarin, uh, the compounds calicarpinol, which was from the beautyberry plant, uh, was actually more effective than DEET in this bioassay. Uh, phyton and coumarin are not more effective than DEET. They're as effective as DEET. Uh, so there was more effectiveness from the other folk remedies. And then from a breadfruit project that we did uh, about five years ago, uh, we showed that it was a particular uh, uh, fatty acids with a certain chain link, C10, C11, C12. And uh, they were, C11 was slightly more effective than DEET. C10 and 11 were the same as DEET. So, there's some variability there, but uh, they were a little more active than these, these that we have here. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Kentrell. Um, that's all we have time for for this news briefing. Um, the archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live Boston. Please join us for our next press conference today at 11 a.m. on an antenna that could double the efficiency of solar cells. Thank you. Thank you.